This week in medicinal chemistry, we get to look at two very important drugs. Aspirin is one of the most widely used drugs, with over 100 billion tablets being consumed annually, most often to treat pain. Penicillin is probably the go-to antibiotic if you've ever had a surgery or symptoms of a bacterial infection from a cut or something else, you may have been prescribed penicillin or one of its derivatives. Focusing on aspirin. Aspirin is predominantly used to treat pain and pain is really just an unpleasant sensory or emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Uh, so basically free nerve endings respond to any type of possible damage whether that's a punch to the arm or maybe your hand on a hot stove element and that will send a pain signal to your brain to tell you to do something to fix that same signal and the injured tissues release what we call prostaglandins aspirin and other mild analgesics which really just mean pain medicines uh, block the synthesis of prostaglandins without causing the patient to lose con consciousness. So this will uh, do a lot of things. Prostaglandins are pretty amazing hormones. If you want to learn more about prostaglandins, just for interest's sake, check out the link down here and you should uh, there's some really good reading. It kind of gives you a good idea of what prostaglandins can do. But basically, they transmit pain impulses from the site of the injury to the brain. They also increase permeability of capillaries, which allow water to enter and causes swelling. So if you've ever sprained an ankle or injured yourself, the swelling comes. And why that happens is to reduce mobility so you actually don't walk on that ankle anymore and hopefully stop uh, any further damage. They also affect the hypothalamus which regulates body temperature and can produce a fever and that would happen if you do have some sort of infection. Um, you want to increase the body temperature to allow for speedier reactions um, to help remove that infection. and. Finally, it can also indirectly stimulate the aggregation of platelets to clot the blood. So if you have damaged tissue, a cut, the uh, prostaglandins actually cause the cut or the blood to clot so it doesn't continue to bleed. Salicylic acid is, is one of the first uh, active ingredients that will be that was isolated from a natural source, which was the bark of a willow tree. Um, but salicylic acid unfortunately causes severe digestive problems. It gives us the same uh, effects as aspirin, but it has way worse side effects. So through the chemical modification of salicylic acid, we can actually produce aspirin, which is acetyl salicylic acid. To synthesize acetyl salicylic acid, we uh, can use ethanoic anhydride, and this is something we would have done in the lab. Uh, in the reaction between salicylic acid and ethanoic anhydride, you get your uh, product acetosalicylic acid or aspirin, and you get a byproduct of ethanoic acid. This is the procedure we would have followed. I'm going to give you a online version of this. It's similar, but they're going to heat the um, mixture under reflux. So in step two, the mixture is heated for a short time. That will be done under reflux, so have a look when you uh, do that experiment. And you then dilute it with water and allow it to cool, which produces the crystals of aspirin, which is what we're looking for. Usually those are fairly impure, and then we have to go through a process of purifying that using hot ethanol and recrystallizing the solution again. Those crystals will then be filtered, just like you learned in chemistry uh, 20 in your filtration procedure. The uh, solid would be dried, and you could then confirm your product is aspirin or the purity of your product by using its melting point and also using IR spectroscopy. Here is the IR spec for acetosalicylic acid, and we have our aromatic ring here, we have our COO group, and we have our OCH3 group 
with three separate distinct peaks. That's what we would be looking for in a pure sample. Take a few minutes to try these questions. Uh, a solution will be posted. There's another way to synthesize aspirin, but it's not as friendly to do in a school laboratory. So uh, you can have a look at it. Um, instead of using ethanoic anhydride, we use ethanyl chloride and a base catalyst to yield the same acetosalicylic acid product, but we also get a product of hydrochloric acid. Since aspirin is almost completely insoluble in water, its bioavailability is fairly limited. The solubility and therefore bioavailability of the drug can be increased by converting it into an ionic salt in a reaction with sodium hydroxide. The carboxyl group seen here is neutralized. That's our acidic portion. And the hydrogen is actually combined with the hydroxide of the NaOH to make the water. We have the oxygen that then has a negative charge and it can accept this positive sodium ion that is in the solution. So we get this here. And this is our ionic uh, salt that is now highly soluble in water. This salt is now fully soluble in water. And when in solution, it produces acetylsalicylate ions, which form ion dipole interactions with and hydrogen bonds with water. This does not actually increase its effectiveness too much because as soon as we uh, bring it into the stomach, it combines with the hydrochloric acid to be converted back into acetylsalicylic acid. There are many drugs that contain amino groups that are also converted into salts that do increase their bioavailability significantly, and fluoxetine is one of them. When it is reacted with hydrochloric acid, it produces fluoxetine hydrochloride, which is an ionic salt that is highly soluble, and this is actually uh, better known as Prozac. That wraps up our talk on aspirin.